game, there is actually a straddle, a double straddle from Bruno, and then a triple sh uh, straddle from Sean. So they let you just straddle from any position and, like, straddle multiple times from any position? Yeah, it. I think they were just kind of making it up as they oh, went yeah, along. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fair enough. <laughs> and uh, no one really wanted to get in the way. Right. Okay, right. so this is $40 blind in. And when we look at that, Kathy here has got herself pocket kings. But what's important is, how many big blinds is that? If 40 is the big blind at this point. Right, yeah. So 40 is the big blind, and, and she's got, what, $900. So she's got, what, a 20 big blind stack? She's got a 20 big blind stack. Right. Okay, so let's look at her bet sizing on this here. Now, I understand where she's thinking. $100 is a big bet in this 5-5 five -five game. Right, right. But she is no longer in a 5-5 five -five game. Right. She is in a 20-40 game and short stacking it. Right, exactly. So that is really critical. Right. And that is why this is not a particularly good uh, bet size. Yeah, I, I'd probably bet, bet more. Yeah. For sure. Um, I think 120 um is 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 too small like 160 and even though that seems like a really huge bet versus all the dead money out there it's about the right size right well and and the other thing is like like if i mean it, it the problem it makes a difference when you bet 100 and then you get called and i mean are you gonna are you gonna bet okay so are you ever gonna <laughs> raise pre-flop against three straddlers and take the pot down pre-flop. No. No. Never. The, You're never going to do that. The the kind of mentality that gets people to straddle, double, and triple straddle. Right. I mean, that's literally never going to happen. So then the question is, well, well, do you want do you want there to be $100 in the pot when you do that and you have pocket kings, or do you want there to be more money in the pot when you do that? And there's, I mean, there's just no, I mean, why would you, why would you make it cheaper? I mean, when, when the answer is, are they all going to fold? And the answer is no, like never. The, the, yeah, I mean, I would bet more, right? Yeah. No, <laughs> so. the, you, you just want to bet more. It is totally a spot for value, and this is a great hand for value. For sure. Now, watch what happens as this really goes off the rails here. It turns out it might have been a pretty perfect bet if she knew Bruno was going to do this. Right. I mean, I you know, the three bet, I mean, again, the three bet basically commits you all in with the eight and you know which is not terrible you know again we're, we're playing 20 you know what 23 big blinds 24 big blinds something like that as effectively in this situation the problem is from my perspective that um i i mean a you have to kind of know what what kind of player kathy is gonna be and, and what hand she's gonna be opening i mean i kind of doubt she's opening I mean, she was the first to act after three straddles, and she makes it a hundred. You know, if she's a tightish, but I mean, I don't think she's got a a six. You know, I mean, I don't think she has those hands. Probably not. You know, I think she's probably gonna fold. I mean, I, I know a lot of you know, especially if she's like on the tighter side. You know, in, in these wild you know straddle, double straddle, triple straddle games. I mean, that the the tighter players. You know they're they're not playing super loose pre flop. I mean that's this is this is they know that they got to play tighter pre flop. So it, it it seems unclear what type of hand Bruno's trying to get all in pre flop against. Right. If you ask Bruno, is she ever dominated when she calls here? Right. And that's a really important question. And Kathy is absolutely not doing this with pocket sevens. Right. So now. Every pocket pair that she has dominates right. him, and the only thing she ever has is Ace King right. that he really wants to see here. So, I, I don't like the bet at all, and he's going to end up pot stuck when she inevitably is going to ship on him. I mean, it's a tough spot for him because because I mean he's straddled and he's got eights. I mean, there's no way he's going to fold his straddle, you know, for eights. But like. Okay, let's say he calls. Now he's calling and he's got 100 left 
and she's got you know eight hundred behind, and he's got eight, and then the you know he's gonna maybe maybe want to call. The thing is, here's the thing: is that I would the way I would play this, right? If I were in his situation, you know, assuming I straddled and assuming I'm just like literally never gonna pull preflop, you know, to this hundred dollar bet, so I'm gonna call preflop, right? And then the flop's gonna come, you know, stuff, <laughs> right? And 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 frequently I'm gonna sort of check call and then I am going to end up check folding because my assumption is going to be that Kathy is basically not going to shove with a hand that can't beat eight, right? Assuming my eights are unimproved. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to kind of play this hand with that assumption that if, if my opponent is trying to commit me to play for stacks after the flop, that eights are no good. Now, this is not a good assumption against some players, against many players. You can't just automatically be calling off, you know, a 10% of your stack pre-flop with a pocket pair and then trying to find a place to fold it after the flop. You know, I'm absolutely not saying that's the way to play poker, you know, especially not in a tournament. You know, I'm not saying that if you're 20 big blinds deep in a tournament and you've got pocket eights, the right way to play it is to call pre-flop and then to find a spot to fold after the flop. That's not what I'm saying. But I, I am saying in this particular spot, if you've got a tight opponent and you've got a situation that's going to be uncomfortable for them, which is when there's three straddles on. I mean, tight players, you know, may, maybe you recognize this in yourself if you're a tight player, but you probably are not 100% thrilled when it goes straddle, straddle, straddle. You know, your your kind of head tells you, oh, well, this is good, right? This is, this is extra blind money. And then your kind of heart, if you're sort of a nittier player, you know, by by sort of personality, is like, oh my god, <laughs> this game's crazy. You know, I could lose all my money, you know, easily. And so, you know, assuming, you know, Kathy kind of is is more toward that mindset, is where is where what I would do and, and how I would kind of proceed after the flop. Now, this is interesting. This just got skipped over, but Wayne has a stack of four twenty. And he folded, and I'm almost... He folded pocket jacks. I mean, that's pretty impressive that he folded the jacks there. I mean, and, and that kind of tells you, you know, assuming Wayne sort of knows knows the, the players and knows the situation. I mean, obviously, Wayne, you know, is not folding jacks because he thinks that jacks are not a good hand. <laughs> you know, he's he's obviously, if he's folding jacks here, he's thinking because jacks are no good. Yeah, he is... He And I assure you, he is not folding because he thinks Bruno has a hand. Right. Okay, so there's only one other reason to be folding the jacks here, and it's because he is properly ranged Kathy. Right, and 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 you know, and 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 so to me that says, you know, Bruno probably shouldn't have been uh, three betting with the eights. Right, is what I would say. Yeah, that's that. I would agree. So Sean has to do the minimum required Hollywooding there, right? <laughs> right. I mean, it, yeah. If you're gonna, I mean, if you're gonna be the third straddle and then fold pre-flop, I mean, you got to you got to save face, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you it's almost like, as if you shouldn't put forty dollars dead in the game. Almost. It's almost. It's almost like that. actually, you should. You definitely should do that all the time. Especially if you're playing with us. Yeah. Uh, we're normally at the Mirage. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Okay, so now Kathy has to do the minimum required um, Hollywooding before shipping it in. Right. Oh, she's speeching him. That's that's good. Yeah, you can tell he, he loves his three bet now. I think he can tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would I would definitely if I had three bet H there at this point I would be like, um <laughs> what am I thinking? Why did I do that? And so now, he's the only question he's asking is, does she ever have ace king? Right. I mean, I mean, it's right. I mean, it's it's tough. I mean, it's, I mean, potentially you could argue for a fold. I mean, I'm not gonna. I mean, whatever. You yeah. Know, you're not gonna fold here. But it's you know, I mean, it's it's yeah, it's 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 grim for the. Ace. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. So, but naturally you run it twice, right? Uh, I I don't Do they know run if it they... twice or. Okay, so, oh, they ran it twice. Yep. So it looks like King's full on the first one, and uh, yeah, she's happy. <laughs> well, look at how happy she is. Yes. And then, uh, 
And then there comes Ding. the eight. <laughs> yeah. There, there you go. So, <laughs> um, the force was definitely on Kathy's side there. So. Yeah. All right. I still don't like how either player played it, but, you know, it's it's an interesting hand, and just learning to take into account the dynamics and the the actual effective size of your stack is important. Yeah, yeah, and I think there's a psychology to these games. I mean, when people when the games go off the rail, it's 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 sort of important to distinguish between how these the, the these stratos work because on one hand, sort of mathematically, they act just as blinds, you know. And so we said, well, now we're playing twenty big blinds. But on the other hand, it has a massive psychological effect on on many of the players, you know. And the nitty players tend to get like extra super duper nitty. And the, and the wild players tend to, you know, play really loose. Yeah, they get know? stickier. And, yeah, and I think that's kind of what we saw here, is that we saw, you know, Kathy, I'm, I'm assuming, is a, a little bit on the nadier side, just from what I've seen. Yep. And, uh, you know, so so she's going to show up here with maybe a stronger range than usual when she opens. And and, and Bruno is, is three-betting with eights, which maybe he does anyway, but I, I think, you know, this is sort of the type of play people tend to make in these multi- uh, straddled pods, yeah. And so I actually think the best player, bl- best play here was Wayne's fold. I mean, and he would have gotten that, quads. I mean, right. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are you gonna do? 